I have no grip, but I must climb. Hmm. A farewell to legs. I'm trying to... What is a good literary reference for today's title? Anatomy of a Fall. It's just that easy. That's great. Anatomy of a Fall. Did you see the Hey, We're Costco Guys discourse? Whoops, I loaded up Balotro by accident. Uh, the discourse I did not see. I did see the video. What could the discourse possibly be about the Costco guys? Isn't it just a, a, a dad and his son kind of having a fun time at the, at the Costco? We're Costco guys. Of course we go shopping while eating a chicken bake. We're Costco guys. Of course we have to try the new double chunk chocolate cookie. We're Costco guys. Of course we have to try out the furniture. We're Costco guys. Of course we work out with the tires. We're Costco guys. What the heck is this thing? They're cannibals. So, the kid needs a propeller beanie. He's literally uh, like 13 years old. He's fine. Half of you in chat need propeller beanies. Honestly, you leave the nation's youth out of it. Saw your reply to Fantano. Important Olivia Tremor control question. Something or Dusk at Cubist Castle. It doesn't matter what the something was. The answer is Dusk at Cubist Castle. I just thought that I'm not suggesting that the Costco guys from the Costco guys uh, TikTok listen to Olivia Tremor control. I just thought that it, it had a great cadence off the tongue. Because every the, the tweet from Anthony Fantano was like, um, what's, what music do Costco guys listen to? I just thought it sounded nice to say, we're Costco guys. Of course we listen to Olivia Tremor Control. Everyone else was going for the fucking... I don't know why ever, they want to divide people so bad. They're literally just watching people like shopping for groceries. And they're like, these guys look like they listen to Imagine Dragons. It's a dad and his son, you sociopath. You don't know anything. Listen, if anything, they sounded like they might be from New Jersey. So if you're going to make fun of them, they're probably listening to the Bon Jovi Slippery When Wet. If you're going to be offensive, at least like make it a coherent stereotype. They definitely look like they listen to my least favorite bands. Guy who has not been to Costco for 10 years because of crippling anxiety. Like, just fucking, they're just having a good time eating some chicken bakes, bro. Let them live their lives. How was the Peloton ride this morning? Oh, thank you for asking. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> it's, um, it's getting better. You know, when, when fully not convalescent, I like to output on a 90 minute scenic ride, I like to put out somewhere over 200 watts average. First ride back on Monday, I think I did like 162. Yesterday ended up hitting like 171 maybe. Today got 176. Still a little bit of gunk in the lungs we're working out. It takes time. There's nothing else you can do but to do it. Yeah, I'm feeling like a lot better. I'm just like once an hour or so, I'm coughing. It Like Monday, it was like a... Uh, Sushi restaurant wasabi sized piece of mucus coming out of my lungs. Today, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's, it's so infinitesimal. The amount of, of ketchup that you might put on one French fry comes out of my, my body about once an hour. That's not too bad. We're get, I mean, I sound like myself again. I can probably almost shout again, which is really helpful for content. Why'd they put a playground up here, man? Playgrounds, there, there's been a lot of discourse about how playgrounds have actually become like, the equipment itself is too safe. I know that you're gonna say, what are you talking about? You don't read the same uh, parent news sites that I do. There's a, a movement to make, I wouldn't say to make playgrounds less safe. It's, to ma it's the idea that you can make them more safe by actually not making the ground out of uh, trampolines because that leads to kids like throwing themselves off of 10 foot high drops, recognizing that their bones are not gonna shatter when they hit the bottom, which might not be realistic for real life. But like, 
I take my kid to the playground in the in the spring in the summertime, like every day that it's not rainy. There's still some opportunities to break your arms at the playgrounds out there. Now, these are playgrounds that were not built in the 2000s. Most of them were probably built in the in the 80s and the 90s, but still. You know what's crazy is the the jungle gym that has a fireman's pole on it. I feel like if they were building that in 2024, there would be like a, a supervisor at the top and like a gate. And the supervisor would be like, okay, you are this tall. You can go down the fireman's pole. And then they like unhook the velvet rope or something like that. But in 1980s and 1990s, kids were just throwing themselves off the fireman's pole. And if your grip failed, well, like you're, you're falling eight feet doing a belly flop onto gravel. Like it's, it's crazy. Kids are pretty resilient. Don't get me wrong. I remember I got the wind knocked out of me in, in junior or senior kindergarten, though. All the kids were like, there was, a, you probably got like six or eight feet high on this jungle gym. And then there was the bars that you could like swing across. And everybody was doing it. And they were like, come on, Ryan. And I was like, I don't want to do it. I don't think my grip strength is that good. And then uh, they were like, don't worry, you'll be fine. Because, you know, in kindergarten, they're like, everyone's on the same team. In fifth grade, they'd be like, oh, here he goes again. But anyway, I, I was like, oh, they're right, I can do it. And my first hand hit the bar. And then my, I was like, this is fine. And then as soon as my feet left the jungle gym, you know, you get that like snap when your, your weight actually like hits the, the bottom and your hands all of a sudden have to actually hold on to 100% of your weight instead of like 20% of your weight. And I like snapped forward, let go and fell exactly on my back on the concrete and just got up like. <laughs> I definitely thought uh, I was gonna die, but then like I was, I was okay like 20 seconds later. Are teens in Canada crazy? I'm, I live in Scotland and I got a problem with teens kicking my tenement door down and vaping in the stairwell. What is a tenement? Tenem tenement door? Sitting on the Eiffel Tower. Pornographic priest is ooh, you've been a naughty girl. You let your something down. It's an apartment block. They're kicking in your apartment? Is, aren't those made of like steel? That's, those aren't kids, brother. That's the X-Men. I don't think the teens are like, they're, they're that menacing here. I've never, I'm not saying they don't get up to some chicanery. Probably do have the, some of the most volatile behavior of any uh, demographic, but I mean, do they do things that sometimes like annoy me? Yes. Are they committing crimes that cause me problems? Not on mass at least, but I don't own a Kia, so I don't know. Oh, here they just beat the crap out of Kias? Yeah, but are, is that teens or is that the people who do it happen to be teenagers? You know what I mean? Are you going like teenagers here are a menace, but it's really just four people from broken homes? Or is it like 25% of the student body? Because like that's a different story. A body, was, a body was found in our city's water supply yesterday. The Kia boys are the worst of our, the least of our worries. That's... Well, you know what? There's one way to look at it, I suppose. <laughs> Bro, the Kia boys are a distraction. Why are you laughing? Well, because I don't know where you live, but that, that definitely does sound like a bigger problem. COVID really messed us up. At some of our schools, we have high school kids reading at a third grade level. We don't do that here. We don't extrapolate a post from r slash teachers that may or may not have actually have any bearing in reality and then apply it to the entire world indiscriminately without looking at the actual situation. You're entitled to believe that. I'm not gonna, I can't stop you from believing that. It may even be true. But what we are not gonna do is lose faith in humanity because of some venting posts that people make when they are like sick of their job, which is their right to do as well for the record. I teach a third grader who reads at a high school level. Now we're talking. It's great that reads at a high school level is like, can understand complicated literature when what most high schoolers actually read is like, here's a book about a hot dragon. 
I guess that wouldn't be like as, as useful of a metric. Yeah, I have this third grader that's reading at a high school level. Oh, what are they reading? Oh, the Eighth Wheel of Time book. They're reading Halo, The Fall of Reach. What were you reading in high school? Um, basically, whatever the teacher asked me to read. I read all the books in high school. I didn't read every book I was assigned to read in college. In high school, in, in high school English, you had to read one to two novels and a couple of plays, which is like a really, really easy assignment when you're 15 years old, unless you have like a seriously robust social calendar or something like that. You can do that. Yeah, I, I had to read, well, listen, I'm not bragging. I had to read 1984 in 11th grade, but I had already read it in like sixth grade. Ninth grade, we read To Kill a Mockingbird. 10th grade, Lord of the Flies, 11th grade, 1984, 12th grade, Fifth Business. Plays, 9th grade, Taming of the Shrew, 10th grade, Macbeth, 11th grade, The Tempest, 12th grade, Hamlet, and A Streetcar Named Desire. No Steinbeck? Yeah, but I read Of Mice and Men, I don't know, in middle school at some point. No crucible love? Damn, bitch, I didn't make the curriculum. I was like 14 years old. You gotta take that up with the Ontario Literacy Convention. People who go to school in Ontario as well, I mean, like, this, we're Ontario boys. Of course we passed the grade 10 literacy test. You don't understand how um, interesting the English education system is in Ontario. Because, like, in ninth grade through the first half of 10th grade, the only thing that matters is making sure that everybody in your class literally knows how to read because you're about to take a standardized test that determines whether or not the school district is going to fucking fire everybody who works in your school. And then in the 11th grade and 12th grade, they're like, what the fuck have you guys done? You haven't read, like, a single real book in your entire lives? Like, you're about to go to college. You got to catch up, bro. This is not a good take, but it is a real take. I remember being like slightly nervous for the grade 10 literacy test and then uh, opening the packet that gets sent by like the provincial school regulator and it's like a short story about like a dude who buys a watermelon from the grocery store and then question one is like what fruit did he buy from the grocery store and then I had like a deep breath and I was like I'm gonna be fine and then I was like wait a minute we're all fucking 15 years old and this is the test? This is what the administrators were stressed out about, bro? It's like, what, did, what do they know that we don't? Did you have to read Oedipus Rex in 12th grade? Uh, no, I read, it, uh, I read it in my first year of classics. No! In, uh, in university instead. But like your first year of university is pretty much just high school to begin with. For most of us, anyway. Thanks to the woke mob in the remake of Oedipus Rex, he actually fucks his dad and kills his mom. <laughs> that's, that's a good joke. That's, you, you were just throwing that one away for free in Twitch chat? That's pretty good. I don't doubt that there's people out there who uh, <clears throat> got mad when they watched the Costco guy's video, but it's so funny just to think of like a video of like a dad and his son having fun and then thinking of people at home like, man, fuck you. Then trying to come up with like one of those like smarmy PSA ways to cancel them. Oh, uh, PSA, um, please don't film yourself in Costco grabbing as many squishmallows as possible. Uh, some of us have imprinted on those squishmallows and uh, we want to buy them and you're clogging up the squishmallow display. You think a violin player hitting the right note could blow up a bridge? Nope. No, I don't think so. You know, it always makes me laugh when it gets shared. That forward, 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 re, 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 you won't believe this. This really says something about society. Whenever it's like, you know, Nathaniel Hornblower 
was the number one violinist in the country. He was playing a gig in New York City, where tickets were $500 each at Radio City Music Hall, and it was sold out. The day before the show, he put on normal street clothes and played the exact same repertoire in the subway. Thousands of people walked by him, not knowing who the fuck he is. A couple of people stopped and listened for a minute and then threw a dollar in his hat and then got on the subway. Kids would notice the beauty of the music, but then their parents would uh, yank them away to continue their day. What does this say about society? You know what it says about society is that 99.9% .9 of people don't know who the fuck Nathaniel Hornblower is, bro. If anything, you should be looking at that shit the other way. You're like, I'm really going to pay $500 to watch this motherfucker play? I'm just going to hang out in bed -Stuy Station, bro. He's bound to show up eventually. Oh, I guess I just won't go to work because, like, uh, someone's playing the violin pretty good right outside of the subway. People got shit to do, motherfucker. It's not like you get $500 if you listen to him play. You know, like, my kid also stops to, like, look at bugs and, like, rocks and shit like that. No disrespect. That doesn't mean that he's bad at the violin. It just means like, you know, part of the reason you pay for concert tickets is like this motherfucker is going to be there at the exact time that he says he's going to be there. I'm going to have a seat, etc., etc. There's going to be bathrooms around. Yeah, there's an expectation of quality. Honestly, fuck Nathaniel Hornblower. Also, I don't want to hear like, no disrespect, a classical violinist in the subway. I want a dude who's banging spoons on jugs or something like that, and he sounds like better than the Blue Man Group. I want a dude playing a pan flute with like 90 pans on it. That would be some shit. Dude who bangs on old jugs with spoons can attract 100 people in the subway. He played at Carnegie Hall for 500 bucks a ticket. No one fucking showed up. They said, we hope you die. That's a tragic story right there. Ready? Go. Oh, I fucking hate this girder, bro. Nathaniel Hornblower, nope. Bartleby the Scrivener, yep, so true. Bartleby the Scrivener being asked if he'd like to listen to Nathaniel Hornblower play Rimsky Korsakov Scheherazade in the subway. Mm, I would prefer not to. Bazinga. I don't know what you just said. You don't know Rimsky Korsakov? Quite a prosaic uh, oeuvre of classical music you've got there. Let me guess. A Lindsay Sterling subscriber. Holy shit. <laughs> hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. She's got shooters. Sorry, sorry. She's good. I didn't say she wasn't good. I just said, let me guess, you're subscribed to her. You made the inference that that means that I'm saying that she's not good. Hey, NL, which class should I play in Final Fantasy XIV? Don't play it. I'm not saying it's a bad game. Quite the opposite. Everybody who plays it loves it. What I am saying right now is that I want you to know the decision that lies in front of you. You're making a decision to vaporize at least 500 hours of your life. Yeah, but it's free. You know, there's free trial up to like level 80 or whatever. You're basically, you're, it's not like, hmm, should I play Final Fantasy 14 tonight? You're, if you make the decision to boot it up, you are going to play for five, you're gonna lose 500 hours. Wouldn't you rather do something else with the 500 hours? If you wouldn't, then play Final Fantasy XIV. Apparently it's great. If you'd like to cultivate like a diverse set of interests with stuff you could do at that time, I'm not even saying that's preferable, I'm just saying this is your, your counterfactual, then go ahead. If I didn't play Final Fantasy XIV, I probably would have never met you and gotten a photo. And? Okay, well that was fucking cooked. That fucking sucked ass. Didn't you play so much Isaac instead? We're now reaching hour 10,000 of people saying, didn't you play 10,000 hours of Isaac? This is my job, motherfucker.
If people were like, should I play 10,000 hours of the Binding of Isaac? I would be like, fuck no. If they were like, it's gonna pay for my house, I would be like, get on that shit yesterday, motherfucker. What are you doing? Someone's gonna take your lunch. Go. Fucking ass, fucking shit from ass. Way worse than how it was going before. Middle left, man. When you've been uh, modded to the point that you only have eight characters left in order to make your points. You know, I was watching uh, Dan play this. He said, how did I do this jump? Somebody replied to him on Discord with a custom made GIF that was like annotated with the kinematics of like where he should place his arms, where the momentum is generated from and stuff like that. People in my chat are typing two words more left. What does that mean, man? It doesn't even have a verb. Shit is just fucking two adjectives. <laughs> Go more left. Okay, fucking win, bro. In response to what stimulus? Big swing down and you've got it. Motherfuckers ever hear about nouns? They're very helpful units of grammar when there's more than one object that you could be referring to. What big swing down? The girder that's swinging up and down? Or the guy that's climbing the girder? We need a better class of backseater, to be honest. I see people backseating in Balatro. The number one piece of backseating in Balatro is sell your worst joker. Do, does anyone understand how frustrating this advice is to receive? Why are you saying sell your worst joker? The advice is buy a better joker. Okay, so what's the better joker? What position is it is? What, what, what hands should I play after I get it? But people are like, you gotta sell your flush joker. And you're like, that's literally step one of killing my run unless like I replace it with something. Wow. Okay, we go again. We go again. That's not how you teach someone. It actually is how you teach someone. Now, I'm a teacher. Your ass went to virtual high school for three years. You really want to get in this discussion? You want to go nuts on the table education mode? People are like, yeah, I could teach you. But then would you really learn anything? What are you talking about? You're a bad teacher? I was a bad ESL teacher. I'm a good instructor. It's true. I explain things well. That's why I get so frustrated when people don't explain things using all the tools in their toolbox. I'm glad you're not teaching or instructing anymore. It's better for society that way. Yeah, I'd definitely say you can see the gains in society that have happened since I stopped uh, teaching. Everybody's like, man, the world was really at the peak of being fucked up in like 2012. And has been just a pretty much like a straight line up the whole rest of the way. <clears throat> okay, hang on. Let me just make sure, slash user. Was it you? 235 messages. No, no, I was you! Clean vacuum. My favorite blind streamer is live. Half the time there's no visuals anyway. You are my, this is a month, two months earlier, you are my favorite blind streamer. You never have anything meaningfully, meaningfully visual on the screen. How do you feel when you won the best stream for visual impaired? Is this stream for blind people? I wish for the day when I don't see the screen or the black screen when I tune into this stream. That's now, we're back to December. This is like three days before Christmas 2023. Let's see, why are we always watching his holding screen? It's my favorite streamer with his blank screen. This is July 7th, 2023. <clears throat> minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. Not a single plus two has ever been written. Minus two, minus two. Holy, everybody has one game that actually turns them into a, a real chatter instead of a troll. Praying for good pitches, neutral pitch, throw a curveball. 
Off-speed pitch. That pitch is fucked. What a pitch. Great pitch. That pitch is insane. That pitch is foul. Strike that pitch. Huge pitch. Nasty pitch. <laughs> oh my god. This dude's obsessed with virtual baseball. Holy cow. Let me see. Stop typing, please. I'm, I'm, I'm reading your earlier messages before you knew that you were being observed. I'm trying to see of where it all went wrong for you. Is half this stream going to be this stream? What an insightful question. Is half of the stream going to be this stream? Copium, copium, minus two, minus two. Here we go. Devs don't really care about the game or the community. All right, all right. Tur please turn your brightness down. There's a plus two, a plus two, the last plus two. Over two years ago, J July 2022, why does he make the screen black when he's choosing a quiz on Sporkle? Exclamation point docket, exclamation. Now the, the dawn of a chatter. Exclamation point docket, exclamation point docket, exclamation point docket. Will Sips be here today? Exclamation point docket, exclamation point docket, exclamation point docket. Then from July 2022 until March 2023, March 2024, three messages a month that just say, why is the screen black so often? We'll see the new messages. Let's see. See how you responded to observation. Sorry, I don't remember typing that one. Well. Be hearing from you soon, kid. <laughs> oh, man. You really meet some crazy people. That motherfucker is trying to tell me what would be good for society. <laughs> the dude has been obsessed with the overlay of a Twitch streamer who doesn't know who he is for two years, man. You want to talk to... Normal people don't do this. How would you know, motherfucker? The key to chatting is just not to chat. The key to chatting is just have some manners, bro. That's, that's basically it. You don't even have to be a decent person, you know? You just have to follow the bare minimum convention. Like, your, your behavior could be horrible, but as long as your messages are nice, how am I supposed to know? I don't really care if you fucking, you know, drive without your seatbelt on or whatever. As long as when you leave a message, it's like, you know... I mean, there's a difference, too, between like, Hey, NL, you're the greatest streamer of all time. A message that I don't particularly necessarily love to read either, for different reasons. And then a message that has like some criticism, but it's at least it's like draped in something that resembles civility, you know, instead of like, well, I'm not going to say what I'm going to say, because it calls into question whether or not they should be in control of their own decisions. Opinion about gamer girls who are better at this game than you? Why would I ever assume that a girl would be worse at a difficult game about climbing than me? Was your ass born in like 1971? You have antiquated ideas of what women are capable of? Very strange question, quite honestly. You think I'd be offended that a girl is better at games than me, bro? I married one. You are a sexist. Normally, that would make us great candidates for being friends, but I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. We love sushi. Listen, that part is true, though. <laughs> Not for every individual, but broadly. I don't, I, one day a, a perfect news study is going to come out. There's going to, like, Maxim Magazine is going to run, like, the ultimate survey. And it's going to be like, we've confirmed, we surveyed 100,000 men and 100,000 women. Women's favorite food, by and large, was sushi. Men's favorite food, no surprise there, pizza. And you guys are going to be like, blah, 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 he was right the whole time. The scientists at Maxim Magazine have, have put in the empirical legwork. If that isn't the case, I don't concern myself with conditional hypotheticals, Origin. The important thing is, when it is the case, you're all gonna owe me a serious apology. Yeah, yeah, man, don't even get to the end of the girder. Why would you, why would you worry about it, man? Does Kate know about the sushi pizza theory? Yes, of course. She watches Librarian. Kate has sushi and pizza enabled in her chat. Exactly. Hey, Anel, did you take physics? 
Faint Bunny, I dead ass. Two things. First off, I thought I banned you yesterday. 100% simple as. Secondly, I did want to ask if you were okay, because after you got timed out twice, I saw you spam like a hundred times. Hey NL, can you help me? I think using Instagram too much has made me parasocial about strangers' lives. And I was like, damn, this person's really going through it. Maybe I shouldn't have banned them. Then the first message you dropped today, hey NL, have you ever taken a physics class? I should have banned your ass yesterday. Quite, that's what I get for showing some degree of empathy for someone going through a mental crisis. <laughs> You aired them out? It's their comments! I didn't air them out! You timed them out for 600 seconds twice. And where did that get us? You piloting a fucking uh, rocket as it approaches the speed of light and gets close to a body weighing 1.8 trillion tons. Your onboard computer? Oh, didn't you take a physics class? Just fucking bust out the formula sheet, bitch. What eigenvector should you take to approach it so that the, all the skin doesn't come off your fucking skull? You learn this in physics. Computer, can't you just uh, auto-program my telemetry? Hmm, then you wouldn't learn anything. Yeah, what's up? Okay. <laughs> Does she not know that I have a foul mouth? <clears throat> I actually, uh, so here's what just happened. My wife has, uh, she's bundled up lots of our daughter's old clothes to give to a, a friend of ours who has a kid who is the age that our daughter used to be. She said, in 15 minutes, please no swear words. <laughs> They're my friend too. I didn't know that they get offended by profanity like that. I have, I don't, not in the habit of just like letting it fly. Origin Angel banned Faint Bunny. <laughs> what did they say? What did they say? Krusty Jugglers, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. <sighs> Some people, they just... It's just easier to be... To, to get attention for being bad than it is to get fulfillment for just being normal. I went through all of their messages before coming to uh, the decision. You know how hard it is to get Origin to ban someone for being mean to me? They would be a hypocrite. So they must have said some stuff in there that was serious. I just gotta get out of here, man. <laughs> I just gotta lock in, lock in, lock in. Everything okay, son? Yeah, dad. I just gotta lock in. Come out, we got you surrounded. I'm locking in. I'm locking in. I just need to lock in. Why are so many smarmy motherfuckers in chat? I know how to do this because I took a physics class. I'm inclined to think that honestly, your physics teachers fucking sucked if you know, if you can apply the knowledge from your physics class to a difficult game about climbing. I was learning about hawking radiation and shit. Astrophysics. I was not learning some Ohio physics. What if you wrapped a steel girder in a fucking rope? That'll help a lot in daily life. It's not like this shit's helping you in daily life. You're in my Twitch chat. <laughs> Why are you so hot today? Because people, they get mad when they get criticized. When I criticize your criticism, people are like, he's pissed off. Your criticism is not like, here's what you should do. It's like, have you never taken a physics class? That shit is insubordinate. That's tragic. <laughs> oh, man. It feels good not to be at the girder. <laughs> you focus on the positives. Oh, man. Maybe the weirdos will go away now. No, I mean, like, listen, I'm not actually tilted. It's just, like... It is crazy that... I, it actually, like, you don't understand that it makes me feel bad as a human being. If you see, like, one trolling message, you're like, okay, that person's... They feel like trolling today, so be it. If you see, like, two years of, like, unobserved trolling, you're like, oh my god. There's people like this in the world. 
cross. No, not that one, please. Oh my fucking god. We're, we're sorting this shit out in one second today. What, what do you want to tell me about the, the Hyundai Ionic? It's actually crazy how he gets past the filters without learning what they're filtering. The humblest tortoise. What was your childhood like? Is this how you thought it would be? When you imagine what it would be like to be an adult? Free to make your own choices, nobody telling you what to do? You think you'd be waxing philosophical about a difficult game about climbing? As if it was fucking... <laughs> okay, okay, caught emoji, alright, alright, you're saved, you're spared. You're assuming that you're adults in chat? Yes! <clears throat> All the kids are watching Kai Sanat. I know you're adults, because I see the fucking millennial ass way, keep calm and carry on way that you type. You're like, we are adults, but please don't assume that we're adults. Only 14-year-olds should be watching you. I just so happen to be a 31-year-old computer engineer from Peoria. <laughs> I started watching your Isaac streams when I was 15, if that counts. Sure, yeah. I mean, I was 25 10 years ago, too. I was watching your Dark Souls Invasion stuff when I was 56. Now we're talking, man. I want more messages like that. People are always like, isn't it crazy? I was 13 when I started watching you. I'm like, nah, brother. Who the fuck else in 2012 was going into YouTube and typing the binding of Isaac into the search bar? That's what it was there for. That's the target audience, bro. That makes perfect sense. It would be crazier if somebody was like, I was 35 when I started watching your Isaac episodes. I would be like, you were 35? Didn't you have like a, a family? <laughs> Didn't you have stuff to do? You were just going into YouTube and like raw dog in the search bar typing in XCOM enemy unknown? Like that doesn't make sense to me. When you're a kid, you got more free time. <laughs> I have those speedos, but in rainbow. It is crazy to think, um, you know, I'm, I'm a noted, uh, you can post your lion ball in chat. I'm a noted uh, old head when it comes to basketball. It's so funny whenever a basketball Twitter account tweets a video from like the 2000s where everyone's wearing those fucking shorts that come all the way down to your ankles. And then they post something like, you need to understand that in the year 2001, if your shorts didn't go eight inches past your kneecaps, you were automatically gay. Which at the time was like a really bad thing to be if you were in the NBA especially. The idea now, like I, I remember being in high school and being like, I can't imagine wearing shorts that come up higher than my knees. Now, I can't imagine wearing shorts that even touch the kneecap. They look so bad. <laughs> Isn't that the reason you're wearing shorts? Is to like uh, show off your legs a little bit and, and get some air? If anything, I'm like a Speedo makes sense, man. As long as the, the thing with the Speedo is I feel like it has to make, it has to make a seal between the, the fabric and your leg. If your balls are too big, you need, and, and like it's not making a firm connection with the substrate, then you probably have to go up a size. That was the reason I didn't like wearing briefs. I'm not bragging. I had a medical condition known as a hydrocele. So whenever I would wear briefs, like a little bit of ball would always be hanging out the side because, I mean, it was, the, the ball was just too fucking big, honestly. I have a hydrocele too. Let's go. There's dozens of us. I think it affects like 4% of men or something like that. I was actually talking about it with my parents because I was in high school when I got it diagnosed and then removed from my body. It's crazy thinking back. I went to an after hours clinic. I was like 15, 16 years old. And I was like, hey, one of my balls is like the size of a lemon. And they were like, that's not normal. We're going to get you in to see the doctor immediately. I saw the doctor and the dude said, oh, he was like, in my head, he's eating an apple while he diagnoses me. This is the class of doctor we used to have. 
He was eating an apple with one hand, and he walked in and said, take your, trou take, take your fucking trousers off. I took them off. He said, that's a hydrocele. I said, what's that? He said, it's just a fucking fluid-filled sack in your, in your scrotum. Here, so he, he said, here's how they diagnosed it, at least before the ultrasound. The dude took out a pocket flashlight and held it behind my sack and then shone the light through. So you could see that there was like a ball and then it was surrounded by like uh, an extra fluid-filled sack around it. He's like, yeah, that's a hydrocele. And I was like, man, it sounds like antiquated medicine, but in 2024, I bet it, they would be like, oh, yeah, it's probably a hydrocele, but fucking our flashlight guy only works Tuesdays and Fridays, and he's booked up uh, until June 2025. Sorry. Um, but like, according to recent stats, 91% of people that come in with this problem uh, see a specialist within 18 months. Unfortunately, the other 9% do pass away. But mm, inevitable, I guess. Is that bad in Canada? I might be exaggerating a little bit. It depends what you're after. Like you, if you are uh, after made pills, I'm pretty sure that they'll door dash it to your house like within 24 hours. At least according to the news stories that I've seen. But if you want, like, medicine to keep you alive, sometimes, I mean, I get it, there's a lot of demand for that stuff. <laughs> so, you know, you might have to wait a little longer. When you worked in an office environment, were you a lunchbox Andy? Depends what you're asking. Are you asking about, um, did I carry a lunchbox? No, I carried, this is back when plastic bags were legal. I would carry a plastic bag with a Ziploc bag with a sandwich in it maybe like an apple and a banana and a granola yeah. bar or something like that. And then I, I rationed myself. I ate lunch out in the neighborhood my office was in once a week. I place a lot of spiritual benefit on eating lunch on a work day in an environment surrounded by other people. You've, it, it makes you feel like you're at the lunch counter of fucking Macy's circa 1951, like building a new ICBM to keep America safe or something like that. It reminds you that you're part of society, you know, you're not just one dude. I used to work at a place close to a grocery store. So on Mondays, on my lunch break, I would just go buy like a loaf of bread and lunch meat, cheese, maybe like some lettuce, and then just make the sandwiches at work. It was like I kind of, I, I didn't bring my lunch from home or get takeout. By the way, that's a great tip for those of you addicted to DoorDash. Did you know that you can buy all the... <laughs> I can't get into this discourse, okay? I'm just concerned that we as a society are conditioning ourselves to be weaker than we actually are with, in respect to this one specific issue. Because I saw somebody that was like, I know I ordered too much DoorDash. I know that I can buy the food from a grocery store but the problem for me is like when I want one sandwich, I have to go buy an entire loaf of bread. I have to buy like a pack of lunch meat. I have to buy a pack of sliced cheese. And I just don't want to eat that many sandwiches. So I end up like throwing out all the ingredients. I wish a grocery store sold like kits where you could just make one sandwich with the ingredients. And I'm like... They've literally, you understand, not to be rude here, but you didn't do fucking anything and you're still complaining. You didn't raise the animal, kill the animal, process the meat, turn it into a weird fucking wet pink log, slice it up and put it in the store, send it out, put it on a, a refrigerated truck to get it to the store. You didn't plant the wheat, water it, harvest it, mill it into flour, bake it into a loaf of bread. You didn't do fucking any, you did, there was, and they, all this shit shows up in the grocery store miraculously due to economic incentives. And you're like, yeah, but I just want to buy two slices of bread. Just eat five sandwiches, it's okay. Living alone and buying food fucking sucks ass. No, it, I did it for so long, it's totally fine. You just buy whatever you want. 
is actually the easiest way to grocery shop. Wait till you got to complicate it with three people who all have specific different food vetoes or something like that. Alone is so expensive. Two is the sweet spot. POV, um, you and your wife split food costs equally, but you eat more food than she does. That's the only way that shit makes sense. Cooking and cleaning for one person is just a lot some days. You ever see the, t <laughs> the tweet about how hard Halloween is? Um, when you have ADHD, because, like, you can't choose a costume, and the re top reply is, like, you fuckers can't do anything, can you? <laughs> what do you mean, cooking and cleaning? Don't say cooking and cleaning for one person, okay? You're cooking and cleaning for yourself. For It's not one person. It's not like you go to the cleaning factory and your output gets sent to a stranger or like your op or something like that. You made the mess, fucking Chicken Little. And say, so it's, what do you mean? It's, it's not easier to clean for 10 people than it is to clean for one person. What are you talking about? Doing chores for other people is more rewarding. There's always a reason, isn't there? It's always a reason it's easier for other people and not for you. We should get some kind of system going because it feels so much more fulfilling to do work for other people than it does to do work for yourself. What if we had a system going where like I did some shit for you that you didn't want to do and you did some shit for me that I didn't want to do. We live in that system right now. That's what the system is. You spend eight hours doing some shit that someone else doesn't want to do. You probably don't want to do it either. It gives you money that you can give to someone in exchange for doing some shit for you that you don't want to do. You've invented the system. You see the shit where they were talking about like it's too hard to make a frozen meal so I have to order DoorDash instead? People were jumping through hoops. Yeah, but making a frozen meal is sometimes too much mental load if only there was a rotating assortment of volunteers that you could sign up for that would make the frozen meal for you. I don't know what you, how deep, could, now it's because at some point, isn't it too hard to sign up for the volunteer service? Like it never ends, man. At some point you just gotta nut up and pop the shit in the microwave, okay? You can also, the rule is, you can also order from DoorDash. You just have to hate yourself. That's it. You are uh, absolved from negativity for ordering from DoorDash as long as you hate yourself while you do it. What you can't do is be like, I have no choice but order from, like ordering from DoorDash is actually the noble thing to do in this, in this situation that I'm in right now. As long as you do it begrudgingly and go, oh, I can't believe I'm fucking doing this again, then there, uh, the light in your soul is still on. I have no quarrel with you. It's only when it's like somebody criticized getting a coffee that costs $3.50 DoorDash for $11.72. I got to explain to them why my unique situation means that that's the only thing I could do here. That's where I'm like, what happens? Getting the prepped meat from H Mart has saved my life. Dude, this based. There's some good stuff. They got some Yang Yam Galbi, LA Galbi, Bulgogi. Also, I was under the impression that everybody knows how to grocery shop. But actually, like, I wouldn't want it, because I hate whenever I'm like, I went to a restaurant last night, and people are like, oh, a restaurant. Have you ever heard of a, the grocery store? I make my own food. You know, the stuff they sell in restaurants is also available in another store. I don't know how the fuck to make takoyaki, bitch. <laughs> I gotta go out there. Every time I've got a craving for takoyaki, I gotta see it coming like two weeks earlier and then go to fucking playasia.com and get a takoyaki maker. And oh, do you know you go to fucking H Mart, you get the takoyaki batter yourself? Like, well, can I just go? Like, never, you deserve treats now and then, okay? And if you, after your 108th time eating takoyaki, you basically break even. Um, but there's people in the comments that are like, I, I mean, I just can't get over the dude who's like, I drive a Ford F-350, so it's actually cheaper for me to get DoorDash than to burn the gas to drive to the grocery store for every meal. And I'm like, brother, it's my favorite guy. 
guy who goes to the grocery store for every meal. No wonder people are like, I don't like to cook. You wake up, you're fucking hungry, but then you got to wait for the grocery store to open, drive to it, pick out all the shit, drive back home. By the time you get home an hour and a half later, you're like not even that hungry anymore. Your body's already gone into starvation mode. Again, I want to reiterate. You should be able to use DoorDash now and then. You should just feel like a tinge of regret to do it. Whenever people are... I, I, I hate the fucking Puritan Andes who are like, you don't deserve anything. You don't deserve to ever go out to eat. You don't deserve to ever eat fucking full fat cream or something like that don't you know you're gonna have a, you're having one cupcake mm, don't you know that the cupcake is full of fucking glyco phycolate you deserve treats man even back in the day on the fucking savannah i'm sure they were like holy shit check it out it's a fucking like cashew or something like that people are really like mm, i'm not sure i've earned the cashew hmm Pretty sure they were child. That is the shit that probably like made life worth living. But you should not be trying to run interference for using DoorDash every day. I mean, you could be like, I use it every day and I'm embarrassed. But you can definitely not be like, I use it every day and it's actually better than the grocery store. Because that is... I don't even know what you want me to say. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to be anything positive. <laughs> See the viral post of the lady who got 15 fries for 10 bucks at the Canucks game? I have. I'm sorry to say, I think the old Canucks are back. This is besides the, the point of the white spot. First half of the season... I'd see a tweet that's like, we're locked in after two. Canucks are up 4-0 on Washington Capitals. Then I'd see the tweet at the end of the third period. Final, 5-1 Canucks. I was like, oh shit, we're actually like doing something this year. Now, ev it seems like every single game is the same tweet after the second period. Having a good night at home. 3-0 Canucks. And then it's like, final, 4-3 in overtime for the visitors. And I'm like, what the... Something's not, this is the start, man. This is the start. What about the fries, though? Well, we talked about it yesterday. I know, like, concessions are just too expensive at the Canucks game. If you, uh, if you think, what, what basically happened is she got a, a really shit pour of fries. The white spot, or the triple O's inside of Rogers Arena where the Canucks play, actually tends to be one of the better values. Certainly not cheap, but uh, she, she was a victim of variance, essentially. If you really wanted to rile people up, tell them how much an actual beer costs. 22 ounce beer, $23. That's why I get my shit dashed to me. <laughs> Imagine being in your seat at the hockey game and then seeing the dude come down with the fucking Uber Eats backpack, the level one Tarkov helmet and the Uber Eats backpack and unzip your shit. Oh, man. <laughs> That would be great. It was like actually cheaper to buy my Dasher a ticket to the Canucks game and then order 24 beers from DoorDash than it was to get beer at the stadium. Holy fuck. Yet I'm the asshole when I try to smuggle alcohol in in the Camelback. Here's my uh, axiom for this. I don't think... Well, first off, if you're in... Like, if you're uh, a... You have a family and you're doing this, you're probably cooked. It's just bad optics. You can't be a dude with a, like a spouse and a kid and then also get like dragged out of the stadium for trying to camel back like 12 beers in. <laughs> it's, you, you're, they're going to send you to rehab. But if you're like, you know, 26 and you're doing that, I think it's totally fine. As long as, and you need to be honest with yourself, as long as it's not going to be a fucking problem. If you can handle your shit and you're not going to get way, way, way too fucking drunk and disrupt things, then it's not a fucking problem. Okay? I told myself, stay calm. And that's what did it. <laughs> He's 
free. <laughs> yes! What's your driving strategy? Uh, don't crash. I'll be honest with you. I, um... On the highway, I'm a normal guy. Most of the time, probably end up going 10 over. Pretty standard on Canadian highways. Speed limit is 90. If there's no traffic, you might do 115. You know? Little traffic, you're probably doing 100. Residential roads? My ass is turtle mode. And if you want to lose your mind behind me and take out a weapon and kill me because I'm making you take longer to get to your destination, so be it. There are residential roads around me that are like 50 and sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll just drive what feels comfortable to me and then I look down at my, my speedometer and I'm doing like 32. Sorry, fit, the speed limit being 50 doesn't mean you literally have to drive 50 kilometers an hour. It means you should drive, you know, up to 50 kilometers an hour depending on the situation around you. On the highway, you got a nut up, okay? If you're driving too slow, they'll think you're stoned. Okay, let them think I'm stoned. What do I care? I don't, I don't know, like, maybe I'm the weird one. I don't drive to, like, shirk suspicion. I don't drive in a way that's like, oh, I want to drive a different way, but I have to drive this way. Otherwise, like, I'm going to get a ticket. I just drive legally. Motherfuckers really just be driving to arrive at their destination. You got me, man. I try to always, you know what they say, begin with the end in mind. Every time I'm driving, I try to remind myself that at the end of the day, like, you know, the best possible situation is that I'm arriving at Save On Foods and not being dead. Like, it's any, anything that happens in the car between my house and Save On Foods is literally just fantasy made up by my, my ape brain. Speeding needs to be punishable by death, IMO. Okay, listen. I was starting to get people around to the drive slower cause, and you're squandering all the progress I've made. Let's, what do you mean you need to get the death penalty for speeding? Let's not go... Let's not be ridiculous. You know how many, like, gradations of law and punishment exist between, like, nothing, nothing and death? <laughs> Come on. That being said, there are some circumstances where I would like to at least have the opportunity to cross-examine some drivers. For example, when you're in nearly bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic on the freeway and the guy behind you is tailgating. What are you doing? Like, you look, use your eyes, bro. I literally can't. I would love to give you more space. Nothing would give me more pleasure than allowing you to get further away from me because you're fucking insane but I can't unfortunately society has dictated that we need to be next to each other for at least the foreseeable future so if we could just figure out how we're gonna make this work do you ever pull off to let people pass no I did, I think if you start doing that you may never find yourself back on the road they can find a place to pass are you in the fast lane usually I'm usually in the HOV lane because I'm driving with my family. Hey, that's only for uh, Model X's doing 200 kilometers an hour en route to their alimony hearing. Liz, that's not fair. Not all Model X drivers are divorced, okay? I think that driving culture is actually changing in this direction. And it's going to make speeders really mad. But, like, I really don't care that you want to go fast. I also want you to pass me. But if you can't pass me and you're stuck behind me going as fast as I want to go instead of as fast as you want to go, welcome to Earth, buddy. Like, we all got to get along, you know? You can learn how to deal with your emotions in a constructive way or you can get into a car accident with me and kill us both because you absolutely have to be comfortable at every aspect, every second of your life. But it's not my problem that you uh, are in a rush. Sorry. It's your problem. Now, illegally pass me. Or... Because <laughs> the other thing is, I don't know how fast you want to go. If I'm already going 100 in a 90, and you're like 
on me as if I'm committing uh, the crime, which I guess I am. <laughs> How fast do I go? It, it's never going to be faster, right? Like, if I get to 130, you're not going to be like, whoa, okay, I realize now. You just want to see nobody else in front of you. You're only going to be happy when there's nobody else in front of you. So it's not even my speed. It's just the fact that you're, you're not first. In which case, I can't help you. I don't possess the, the powers to fix your brain. Also, actual number one driving pet peeve. I'm telling you sincerely, please don't ever do this. You are behind someone merging on the freeway. They merge and you merge simultaneously. You immediately, within w less than one second of the merge, lane change and speed by them as fast as you can. One day, you are going to die in a car accident on the highway. It's a dangerous habit because many people, when they get on the freeway, First, they get in the lane that they have to get into because it's the merge lane. And then they're like, I'm going to be here for eight hours. I'm going to move to the middle or even to the left. You just got to give it like five seconds to percolate out. Let them decide if they're going to move. If they're not moving, make a normal lane change. Don't do a Volkswagen Golf insane lane change where you hit the gas so hard that the bottom of your car goes down and the front of your car goes up and it goes like you're in such a rush to get to buffalo wild wings or something like that man what if they were doing like 23 on the merge lane the thing is speeders always love to come up with that situation the number of times in reality like the the ratio of being annoyed by speeders versus like made up situations is actually like 49 to 1. Have I been stuck behind people merging too slow on the freeway? Yes. How many times does that happen versus a, a dude behind me looks like he's going to take out a machete and chop my head off because I am driving 105 and he wants to go 107 six to seven times a day? Wait, a subreddit for speeder pride has to be real. Speeder problems. There are speeding subreddits, but it's just people complaining about tickets. Okay. So what you're saying is that we're on the cutting edge of a new social movement. Ben Gibbard says, Hey, I've been watching for five years. Can you audit me? Okay, slash user Ben Gibbard. It says here you've got a hunger twisting your stomach into knots that your tongue has tied off. It says here you've got an impulse. If you have a feeling, let it out, but you cannot get it past your mouth. Papa! This is the sound of settling. Papa! You know what I'm talking about? You see the tweet about uh, Weezer that said, How did Rivers Cuomo get uh, Ben Gibbard and Anthony Kiedis' haircut simultaneously? Holy, that was a good swing. You want to hear my new character? His name is Asexual Isaac Brock. <laughs> what is? Okay, what, uh, you can't just give me the character's name for that one. It's not self-explanatory. Because Isaac Brock, <coughs> he's not really singing about stuff that's that heterosexual or horny or like anything. He's mostly singing about, you know, the quiet agony of being from a town whose best restaurant is a Papa John's. I honestly couldn't tell you what any Modest Mouse song is about. Oh, really? <clears throat> you couldn't tell me what All Night Diner is about? I was at an All Night Diner, size of triple X, but they was talking about root beer. I'm just sitting here breathing the thin air. Thinking of the oxygen. Have I told you? Have I? When I have sex, I'm always thinking about the pavement so I can avoid premature ejaculation. I woke up remembering to thank him. Better things to do, so I'll start drinking. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a real modest mouse head. You think I don't own a hard copy of Building Nothing Out of Something? Building Nothing Out of Something, my favorite all time album. <sighs> It's got some bangers on it. Let me think. It's got um, Never Ending Math Equation, Interstate 8, Banger Rendition of Sleepwalking. 
Mutual friends' parents left town for a week, so we raided their liquor stash, walked down to the riverside. That's a good one. Positive, negative. Whenever you breathe out, I breathe in. Other people's lives broke. That's a slapper, man. It's nonstop. It's hits from front to back. How do you feel about Moon in Antarctica? Great album. Some amazing songs. <clears throat> Me personally, I, I prefer when Isaac Brock was a little less spiritual and a little more uh, angry. Just my personal taste. Like, I, I like less of the, like, your heart felt good. It was dripping pitch and made of wood. And I like more, like, first the chain reaction started in the parking lot. We started to bleed onto the big streets and bleed out onto the highways and off to other cities. Built a store and sell these rocks. So are you feeling real dirty living in your parking lot? Waiting to bleed, you know. And that's like a nine minute long song that just keeps going until the guitar solo hits and the guitar solo just goes I've never taken meth, but I kind of feel like my favorite era of Modest Mouse music is songs to take meth to. You see the guy on r slash meth who um, kept taking meth and stealing DoorDash orders and then all the other people on r slash meth were like fucking stop it and he was like you can't make me stop. The <laughs> librarian had it ready to go. No! Okay. All timers. <laughs> Men can't have hobbies anymore? I, well, I know it's an insane sentence. Why are you on our meth if you don't do meth? Well, like, can a guy have hobbies anymore? A guy's not allowed to be curious? I don't go to uh, subreddits for hobbies that I'm interested in anymore because that's like the first step on like not being interested in the fucking hobby anymore. You're not a really chili head unless you got uh, Mama Liz's chili oil in your cupboard. Mama Liz sold out to Oots Foods 12 years ago. I wish we could get the independent Mama Liz's chili sauce back. Oh, I just drove out to Frisco this weekend. There's a new sauce made. It's called Pepperhead's Delight. It tastes so similar to what Mama Liz's used to taste like before she sold out. Like you can't just, you get, who would have thought the first time you went, you put hot sauce on your eggs and you were like, mm, this is good. Who would have thought it would lead you down that sorry path? Instead, it's great to go to subreddits for shit you have no familiarity of and assume that this is what the average person who partakes in this hobby is like. The reason I go to our meth on occasion is because, like, I have absolutely no concept of what it's like to do methamphetamine. I have no concept of what it's like to live life when addicted to methamphetamine. So I'm learning a little bit secondhand about society by reading these Reddit posts. No, you saw it on Twitter. Bro, I've been reading r slash best of thwacked out takes for 10 years. You don't know shit about me. That must explain why r slash sex has so many users. Bro, biggest like wake up call in my life. Probably 23 years old, something like that. Go to r slash sex, sort by top all time, hoping there's going to be some tips or something in there, some tricks, some cheat codes. Just a bunch of posts that are like, my boyfriend did some fucked up shit last night. How should I feel about it? Really teach you a lot about the real world. I was hoping there would be like a Prima strategy guide at the top or something like that. But instead it was like a bunch of people learning to have self-respect, not let people treat them like that. To walk through the IGN walkthrough. <laughs> Me thinking I would lose weight when I lived in Japan. Turns out I just bought deep fried chicken from the convenience store and ice cream because it was so delicious. I hear that. Um, me thinking that I would lose weight in South Korea, even though I was drinking 10 Cass's Heights or Max's at least three times a week and eating pizza, fried chicken, Korean barbecue, and then just random shit from the Chimbok, 
uh, the kimbap jungkook just to keep myself going and then realizing that i fucking did lose like 10 pounds what the hell's going on me going back to canada thinking i'm definitely gonna lose even more weight because i'm not gonna be drinking 36 beers a week anymore and then somehow putting on like 15 pounds within two months of being back what the fuck me realizing that when i worked and lived in south korea I would spend, even though I was drinking Saturdays and Sundays, I was spending most of the day walking around with my friends. And then in North America, even though I wasn't uh, drinking 10 beers a day on Saturday and Sunday, I was just sitting inside of my room playing Dota 2. <laughs> there must be something, they must be putting something in the food over here. I don't, I can't explain it. The only thing that makes sense, there must be something in the food. Can you not walk around in North America? I mean, like, where I lived, I could have walked around. It was just kind of like, there was nothing to go to. Like, I could walk, the, the suburb that I lived in had sidewalks. I could easily go for like, a, you know, an hour and a half, two hour walk or something like that, but what am I gonna do? Walk my ass to chapters and like, look at a book that I don't wanna buy and then walk home? In South Korea, there was a good reason to walk. Like, half the places that you walk by were selling beers. What's Korean beer like? It's pretty terrible at the time. There, it was dominated by uh, three brands, Cass, Height, and Max, that all tasted exactly the same. Cass is good, dude. You know what blew my mind was coming back to Canada and being like, Thank God I don't have to drink casks anymore. And then you go to like a Korean restaurant and realize that people are paying import prices for casks. They're paying like seven bucks a, a can for casks to have with the Korean barbecue. And you're like, it's literally worse than all. I get that it's authentic, but it's like the, it's worse than the worst domestics. You were probably IPA pilled. I was like 22 years old. I don't know if anybody in this chat between ages 19 and 22 drank more $1 or less lagers than me. I will never have that palate back ever again. I was not, craft beer did not exist when I was in university. It was probably invented by somebody who went to university with me or Jimmy Carter, I don't know. Not in America, but in Europe. Okay, well then fucking fly to South Korea, have some cast. Tell me how good it is. Mmm, it kind of tastes like a Herlin Berlin Weezer. No, it doesn't. They take corn, they put it in a fucking bucket, put some table sugar on top, and then wait like six months, and then put a label on it. That's, that's cast height and max, okay? Tired of people pretending IPAs are good? We literally don't care about you at all. We don't even think about you. Do you know how based it is to be an IPA maxer? I'm done apologizing for being an IPA maxer. I'm now just saying, you know what? You've had 10 years to adjust your palate to industry trends. If your ass is still walking into a pub, looking at the menu and there's two lagers and eight IPAs and you're like, I guess I'll take the amber ale. Then fucking that's on you, bro. You know what it's like to look at the beer list and see nine things that hit your exact tastes. Ooh. IPA haters stay losing, bro. I hate IPAs. I hate IPAs. Me and the boys enjoying a swift fat tug before our hoin dark matters arrive. Ten years from now, people will be like, I can't believe we drank that filthy IPA stuff. Yeah, I don't know, maybe. It's kind of sick right now, though. That'd be a good sketch. Because, like, just because you regret it ten years later doesn't mean you had no fun in the moment, right? Like, I'm sure if you were dressed like Flock of Seagulls in the 80s, when you looked at photos of it in 1995, you were probably like, man, I look silly. What were you going to say? Oh, man, oh, fuck, I can't believe I got so much pussy in that outfit. The psych! Uh... <laughs> It's the times you're in, man. There's nothing wrong with going to a place, seeing 10 IPAs on the menu and ordering an IPA. What do you think, you fell out of a coconut tree? Bro, it's March. <laughs>
2015 with 2.8 billion views. No idea. I, I, no, I do think I'm gonna. I'm, it's stressed out. It's stressed out. Good, the good old days. Yeah! <laughs> hey! He knows. He's contemporary as, far, as long as we're talking about songs that came out 10 years ago. Who's the band I always get 21 Pilots confused with? The Chainsmokers. Thank you. Thank you. No vocals? No, I think it's a bad song. We're so back. <laughs> Still working out the Mama Liz's mucus oil. I can't breathe in too deep, or I do that. Not a not a great start to the video. Today's puzzle. <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing here? If I hypothetically had uh, an advertisement blocking Google Chrome extension, is it possible that against my best interest they went behind my back and cut a deal with advertising? companies in order to actually let advertisements through because it seems like there's a, certainly a lot of them hypothetically around these days they met with the ceo of ads that's literally happened multiple times son of a gun well it looks like hypothetically i might have to change then fairy grass bell awesome grass monotype grassy <laughs> uh, Oddish Okay, he's made out of grass, whatever Grass monotype Bulbasaur You ever hear of the Steel monotype Steelix Grass monotype Chikorita we're so back. <laughs> Grass fairy. Fairy Kahlo steel monotype. Agron. Steel monotype. Beldum. Beldum. What? I have absolutely no idea. I don't even have a reasonable guess for, for anything else. Grass fossil, callus fossil. I'm, I'm straight up giving, I, I can't come up with another answer. Agron Mega, he becomes a monotype. Sylveon, Froki, and Amaura. Klefki, you know you're in trouble when the most common for a square is the one that's car keys. Tinka Tink. Credilly, Cacnea, Meowstic Male. I mean, this one was impossible, bro. Wilcox Free Range Omega 3 Large Brown Eggs USDA AA 24 Count. Are the eggs or batteries, bro? Make up your mind. I do. Can I say something just about. I go to the Richmond Costco all the time. They sell, um, I don't know what to describe it as, a flat of eggs. It must be 64 eggs. It's absolutely enormous. You would say, who the hell is buying this flat of eggs? I have an answer for you that may surprise you. Every single family inside of the Costco is buying the pallet of 64 eggs. I would have thought that it would have very, very limited appeal, but it is possibly one of the highest, hottest ticket items inside of the store. Where do you put the egg? Because the tray will not fit in your fridge. It'll only fit in your Costco fridge. So I don't know what you do with the, maybe you have four dozen sized cartridges that you just refill or something. I just don't like eggs that much, man. Family of four, 12 eggs per person per day. You go through it pretty quick. <laughs> I, guess you do. I guess you do if everybody in your family eats a dozen eggs a day. They only have to eat three a day. 
Three eggs a day. I'm not saying it's a lot from like a health standpoint. <coughs> I'm averaging three eggs a day for every single member of your family is a lot, man. If your family is like all bodybuilders or something, sure. But like if one person takes the day off from eggs, your ass got to eat six now. That's too many eggs for me. I think it's $6.99. $5.99. Oh, that's really cheap for free-range eggs. I can see why people are buying them. I'm just not an egg guy. It's the same thing when you go to the Costco and you see the lady who has like 12 gallons of milk in her cart. And you're like, do you run like a fucking cheesery or something? Like, what's going on there? How are you consuming that much? How much freezer space do you have to even store this much milk? Like, I don't understand. She's got kids. It's fucking 12 gallons of milk, bro. <laughs> she, she better be running a smoothie shop or something. Three kids. Each kid drinks a gallon a day. You get through it pretty quick. All right. All right. Good point. Milk is easy liquid protein. Yeah, we all know. Okay. So what number would I have to... Apparently 12 gallons wasn't ridiculous enough. An entire shopping cart full of milk. You're like, that's a normal pedestrian thing to see every day. How many shopping carts full of milk would they need to have for you to not chime in and say, actually, lots of people drink milk as a cheap source of protein? 100 gallons? Would it have to be 100 gallons? Obviously, the number that I, I picked is not ridiculous enough for you. I wouldn't know because I don't live in Nebraska. I thought people probably consume like maybe a glass and a half of milk a week on average. What, what's a reasonable amount of milk then? I drink four gallons a week. You're fucking cooked, man. <laughs> the dairy industry owns your ass. Am I talking to a human being or am I just talking to milk right now? Four gallons a week? Isn't that shit like it's over two liters a day? Dude's drinking a, a two liter of cow titty milk every single day. He literally thinks he's bovine. That's 73, 73 grams of protein. Also known as one and a half Costco cheese pizza slices. Two glasses a day. So I drink about two liters a week. The fuck? How small is your glass, motherfucker? 14 glasses equals a liter? Fucking the shot glasses? What's going on here? Why, why are we having such a hard time making the measurements make any sense? This shit doesn't make any sense, man. Am I the only fucker here who knows how to divide? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Bro, <laughs> it's a mouse. <laughs> Don't say that. It is funny to imagine a mouse typing, though. Yeah, anyone else here eat two pieces of cheese a day, or am I crazy? Squeak, squeak. God, you, anyone else, you know what I fucking hate? When you try to steal some food from the fridge and the... Uh, lady who owns the house tries to step on you with her slipper the heck is this bro it, you know what it looks like it looks like someone's nut just exploded no no you know what it looks like it looks like this is like a fucking monster and then this is like one of its jaws and is eating this dude right now. And the dude is like, don't eat me. But he can't do anything because his legs are already inside of the thing. Your ass is Monaco. Monaco. No, okay. You're, you're in Africa, presumably. Oh, I know you. You're the Gambia. What do you mean unknown country? Gambia. Gambia? It's Gambia, bro. Liberia. Oh, motherfucker. Isn't this the country that's inside of Senegal? Burkina Faso. Cote d'Ivoire. That looks like it could be a coast. Guinea Bisu. Oh. <laughs> right next door. Guinea Bisu. So this is Guinea and this is Bisu. And most people will tell you that you got to get Bisu's health bar down to zero first. 
because it's easier to deal with enraged Guinea than it is to deal with enraged Bisu. I understand. Bisu is a girl too, you can tell, because they have a bow on their head. Plants versus Zombies Garden Warfare. Plants versus Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Oh no! It is the dive rocket launcher! Plants versus Zombies. Battle for Neighborville. We must take action regarding this individual. Relax, I'll handle it. I am the angry pumpkin. The architect and the builder arrive calmly from their escalator with a sense of purpose. They are playing at their residence. Yankee, a noun meaning a native or inhabitant of New England. It's called America. Clock, a noun meaning a teachers. A noun meaning Let's one. not go there. Let's not go there. Althorn. A noun meaning an alto sax horn. The word is from German, combining alt meaning old and horn meaning horn. Althorn. <laughs> a noun meaning an alto sax horn. The word is from German, combining alt meaning old and horn meaning horn. I love when they say horn meaning horn. Alt meaning old and horn meaning horn. Beckon. A verb meaning to summon or... Affable. A adjective. Goated NL word. Wordmonger. A noun meaning a writer who uses words for show or without particular re Wordmonger. Hmm, you disingenuous wordmonger. Again to harangue me with my past insolences, I see. Hmm. I've heard it so recently and so long ago. Some might say it resembles an alt horn. Alt, of course, from the Middle German meaning old, and horn meaning a horn. Incoherent. An adjective meaning lacking coherence, such as. <laughs> She's got to go back to English class. This is too much. You can't use the word in the definition of the word, lady. Surmised. A verb meaning to form a. Hovel. A noun meaning an open shed or shelter. Chat's house. Sorry. <laughs> Yatesian. A biographical name meaning William Butler, 18... That's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Fodder. A noun meaning something... F Michael Caine in Goldmember. Apun. A verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, repudiate. Apun. A verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, <laughs> repudiate. Apun, a verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, repudiate. Apun, a verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, repudiate. Dude, she's putting, she's putting too much sauce on it in the middle. I can't figure out what it's supposed to be. Apun. A verb meaning to fight against. <laughs> Apunyen comes from Middle English. I can't. <laughs> like, that's not, that's not English in the middle, man. The AI has lost it. Like, what's going on? Apun. A verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, repudiate. Apun. A verb meaning to fight against. I, I think it broke. Apunyen comes from Middle I English think it and Latin, broke, dude. meaning to attack, repudiate. Apun, a verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle English and Latin, meaning to attack, repudiate. Apun, a verb meaning to fight against. Apunyen comes from Middle. Oh my God! Get me in front of scripts, bro. I'm the smartest third grader. I thought it could be like impugn. Imp you've impugned me, you word monger. Because in my head, I was trying to reverse engineer what could turn the lady into one of those videos where white boy orders perfect Chinese in a restaurant and no one bats an eye. And I was like, it's got to be some connection of collection of characters you don't see very often. Apoplexy, 
a noun meaning stroke. I'm apoplexying my shit right now. Calancho, a noun meaning any of a genus, Calanco, of chiefly African tropical succulent herbs or shrubs of the orpine family, often cultivated as ornamentals, called also bryophyllum. New Latin refers to the Latin language used in scholarly and scientific works after the Middle Ages. Calancho. No! With an E. With an E at the end. Like aloe vera. Oh, man. A Putin was still huge, though. When she goes like, oh, Puyen. <laughs> like, what is... Beef, pork, onions, garlic, coriander, red pepper flakes, salt, black pepper, cumin, fenugreek, paprika, kmeli sinelli, from cabaret, sour cream, cheese, flour, and water, from the nation of Iran, from the nation of Georgia, oh, kubdari, it has a, become a beloved dish among tourists who are eager to explore its unique culinary scene. Me when I'm a tourist. Hey, you guys got anything resembling a sandwich? I'm not even Hayden. I would buy this for sure. There's a, and I only get to do it like once every couple years. On the West Coast, is, I guess it's more of an East Coast thing. Going into uh, like a bakery, either a Chinese or a Jamaican bakery, and getting a couple of beef patties and just eating them in your car oh man do you ever feel like you're more a part of the city than when you get a jamaican beef patty and eat it behind the steering wheel of your car i don't know i don't know the answer car in the city you're from europe huh we do things a little differently over here even the walkable cities have people driving around like nutcases you wouldn't be able to comprehend it. We clown in this bitch, so true. Take your sensitive ass back to Warsaw. We're dying in a car accident that took place at 18 kilometers an hour in this bitch. We clown in this motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry. Did you see the Americans bragging about driving across the UK? Yeah, but honestly, I'm North American, so I was kind of like loving that for them. Because the, the first post was all... British people making fun of Americans. Americans will really be like, I got seven days in England. I'm thinking day one, London. Day two, fucking Glasgow. Day, day three, we'll go to Dublin. Day four, Wales. Day five, we're going to go see Dover. Day six, we're going to go up to Inverness. Day seven, back down to London. Any, any pro tips? And all the, they're like, don't fucking do it. The roads aren't. They don't go as fast as you're used to. You won't have any fun. And then those motherfuckers said, bet, and they fucking did it. And their travel diary was like they had a fucking great time. I love that for them. Now, is it the trip I would want for myself? No, not really. But literally they said, that's all right, but we don't mind driving 10 hours a day. And they fucking did that shit. You know the song where they go, so what we get drunk, so what we smoke weed? You ever see the changed lyric panel for it where it says so what we get sober so what we smoke nothing <laughs> just thinking about it is, i mean there's nothing more cerebral to it it just makes me laugh just thinking about it the kids bob version <laughs> alvin and the chipmunks version of um party rock anthem Party Rock is in the club, looking for your girl. She hit my heart, yeah. I do hate an early death card. It feels like such a waste. Let's go, um... Let's go world. And hanged man. No wheel. <laughs> so what we don't wheel, so what we roll nothing. Well, as always, Bloodstone is just straight up pure ass, huh? I, I have another conspiracy theory, and I'm embarrassed to say that my conspiracy theory is something I really believe. The percentages on, uh, the probabilities on Bloodstone and the probability on Space Joker fucking lies to you. The Space Joker one pisses me off. 
because so many times I've had Space Joker and Blueprint triggering on Space Joker. So that should work like fucking, I don't know. You, roughly 50% of the time you play a hand, that hand should be leveling up. Then you're like, why am I losing? And you're like, oh, I played 43 of a kinds and my three of a kind is like level 12. You're like, how the fuck does that happen? It's like a 0.07% chance to be that low. Statistics be like that? Yeah, or maybe they fucking cook the books, Enron. 12 procs in 40 is pretty standard if it's one in four, but it's not one in four because you got a blueprint that's triggering on the space joker, Wolfski. You got a blueprint that's triggering on the space joker. Humans are bad for getting a feeling for statistics. Me, when I've committed accounting fraud at my Fortune 500 company, Oh, excuse me, uh, CFO, can you explain these uh, discrepancies? The human brain is really bad at dealing with large numbers, so I can understand why you would be confused, but I assure you that everything is completely on the record and I won't show you how. My, I, I will now be pleading the Fifth Amendment. That's what you sound like right now. Just show me the code. If the math is right, then show me the code. Code don't lie. Please, I just want to see like a three bloodstone polychrome hit Mm, imagine that a one, a one bloodstone polychrome. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, one in three, one in three. We played 10 hearts, it worked two times. Okay, yeah, no, that's what, yeah, we, you could expect that in 37% of the situations. Well, could you uh, expect it every fucking time because that's what's happening? Doesn't make any fucking sense, bro. Probability is a lie if this bitch doesn't hit. Oh, all right, you guys were cooking. Or oh, maybe the stats nerds are on to something. We will now be bullying the dice rolls into doing what we want. Now do it again, motherfucker. Yes. Yes. Oh, live with that. Thank you. You see what you're capable of? 3x bloodstone, 2x pimpy. Local thunk hot patch in the shit because I'm onto his ruse. Exactly. That, that's the other thing. You're absolutely right. You're going to tell me that Space Joker and the banana breaking trigger at the same rate. One in four. You must literally think that we're stupid. That we're just going to swallow that narrative. That's not going to happen. Banana breaks three in 10, not one in four. And Space Joker works fucking one in five, okay? And if, if that's not true, then show me the code. It should be simple. It should be simple. You think there's any straight people in the closet? It's a funny idea. I mean, as funny as someone not living their true self could be, but like a guy who came out as gay too early and then realized he's straight, but he's surrounded. He's talked too much shit about heterosexual people since he came out and now all his friends are gay and he's too plugged into the gay scene and he has like a husband and shit. <laughs> and he's like, God, I hope no one ever finds out I'm actually straight. That, I bet that's happened, man. There's enough people in the world. You have to cry, but here's the thing, you also have to laugh a little bit. Sounds like something you'd see in the most offensive movie in history. <laughs> yes, no, I hear you. A comedy released in like 2006. I, I completely understand where you're, where you're going with that one. Made $172 million at the box office in 2011. In 2016, people started unironically saying, you can't make that shit these days. Polychrome's gotta go at the end, bro. Yeah, no, no problem, zero bloodstones, we win regardless. Yes! Bloodstone went one for five? Zero for five into a one for five? And you're gonna tell me it's a one in three chance. Okay, sure, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. No, 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 no yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I believe you, I believe you. Makes perfect sense. Oh, you're gonna suck me. This is going to pay for itself immediately.
What the fuck? <laughs> Why is Bloodstone so fucking ass, bro? How many times did it work on this one? It worked it worked one time. It went two out of five. Oh my god. Why, by the way, do the stats and these always defend shitty rolls? They never defend like great rolls. It's never like, yeah, actually, it's surprisingly likely you'd win the lottery twice in consecutive fashion. Randomness is just like that sometimes. It's always like, oh, you fucking, you had a 90% chance to make a shot and you missed it three times in a row. Well, actually, I don't know if you went to the same Stats 101 lecture as me, but random things actually happen surprisingly frequently. Fuck you. We clown in this bitch. Please. Yes. 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 Okay, I, I can't even be mad. It did what it could. We're, we're probably not going to get there, but it did what it could. You need a pair. If you, if you don't have a pair, you lose. But we're not going to get it on this one, so you got to send it. <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> no, it's still a good run. It's still a good run. All right, I'm going to send you over to my wife's stream. Good Balatro run. I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Bloop. What's the genre of music in Persona? Where it's like um, the RJD2 beats in the background, and then like a man with a voice like a muted saxophone pops out and like reads his grocery list to you. Jazz. Rap jazz. The hardest beat you've ever heard.